so much. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second session of the Community Research Academy. Thank you so much for being with us today. And if there's anyone new on the line, uh, you can let Agnes know if this is your first day attending the Community Research Academy so that if you haven't received all of the resources, she will send them out to you. But today we are welcoming and we welcome today our speakers, uh, Ms. Barbara Harmon. And Ms. Barbara Harmon is a nurse. She's an she is an adult nurse manager with over 31 years of experience at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Her time at NYP was established as a staff nurse before becoming a patient care director, then a clinical documentation nurse, and now clinical manager. In addition, she is the co-founder of My Empowerment Place, which helps empower parents and children who are stressed through holistic methods, and harnesses the power of healing through Reiki sessions, sound healing, stress reduction workshops, sleep, aromatherapy, meditation, and mindfulness. So today we will hear Ms. Barbara Horman first, and she's going to discuss and introduce us to the nurse's role in clinical trials. And then later on, we have another speaker, um, and this is Mr. Evan O'Donovan, and he will talk to us about steps in research protocol and quality assurance. Before he speaks, I'll tell you a little bit more about him. But now we have Miss Barbara Harmon. Hello, hello, Barbara. How you doing? Good, Lula. Thank you for inviting me. And Thank welcome, you everyone. My pleasure. I am going to start screen sharing so you can see my slides. And, oh, sorry, we got to the end somehow. Okay, so we're gonna talk about phases of clinical trials and an introduction in the role of nursing and um, in clinical trials. I am gonna be hopping off at the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions for me um, at the end of my talk, maybe we can, uh, get those out of the way. Or if something comes up during Evan's talk, you can email Agnes, she'll get them to me and then I can get back to you. Okay, let's get started. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Great. All right, great. So the phases of clinical trials um, are, you may have heard about with these vaccine trials. First phase is called phase one. And that question is really, is this drug safe or treatment safe? And that's really the first time it's done in humans. There's typically animal studies that are done prior to human studies. And these human studies are usually done in a small number of normal volunteers that don't have any disease or in a disease specific population like cancer or um, Lou Gehrig's disease or whatever the, the, um, the researcher is looking at, whatever the medicine that the researcher is looking at um, will be in these studies. And it's usually done in a very controlled setting. So either in a hospital setting or um, they have these research hubs that they do phase one clinical trials in. And the participants, we used to call them subjects, we now call them participants, are watched very, very closely. We do some phase one studies where we're doing vital signs every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, uh, drawing blood very frequently, depending on what the protocol is uh, looking for because safety is our main concern. And the purpose of these studies is to find out how the body is reacting to this new drug or this new treatment. Um, and that's why we're drawing the blood or taking the, the vital signs or doing whatever the, the study requires. And at this phase, it's unlikely to have any therapeutic effect. So if you're joining a phase one clinical trial, it's really not in hopes of curing any disease or getting you better in any way. It's really just for safety and to see how, that, how our bodies react to whatever we're doing. And if it is a medication, the dose may start as a very small dose and then we gradually go up 
or it could start at the full dose right away. It just depends on the study. And if it is a dose escalation trial is what we call it, um, if there are no side effects or few side effects, then the dose can go up. And this phase, phase one, can last only a few weeks or a couple months before the data is analyzed. All right, next one is phase two. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one is looking at if the drug or the treatments work. So the first one was if it was safe. Now this one is if it works. And usually these are controlled randomized trials as well. And it's done in larger groups of people. Um, it can also be normal volunteers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or people with diseases. And so when a, a doctor or a scientist comes up with a drug, they think that this drug will work in a certain way. And this phase is, is really seeing if the drug is working as expected. And at this point, we may add a placebo in there. They're called placebo controlled trials. And the part of the participants will get a, a substance that looks exactly like the drug that we're giving but it will be a placebo, it will be inert. There's no activity in it whatsoever. And the FDA requires this to make sure that there isn't something called the placebo effect, which most of you have probably heard of. If you give something and you plant the seed that this is going to work, sometimes our minds are so powerful that it really does work. But if the placebo works, then we know that something has happened and the placebo effect is is in effect with this patient or participant, um, or it may, or nothing may happen. And this is to ensure that the data is really valid. And standard um, treatments can also be used as a control. This is done a lot in cancer studies. Um, so they'll test a new drug versus the gold standard of whatever cancer treatment there is out there. And I mentioned it before, in this study, we usually draw blood at, at certain time points for drug levels to see if it's, um, if the body's using it up right away or if the, the drug is staying in the system longer than expected. And at this point, there may or may not be any therapy, any therapeutic effect. Um, people may get better or they may not get better. And at this point, everybody may get the same dose or they may be those dose escalations like we had in the phase ones, or it may be decreased if people are getting too many side effects. And this phase is really the longest phase. It can last a few months to a few years uh, because this is really the, the, where the meat of the research is. And only about 18% of the studies that go on go move on to the next phase, which is phase three. And phase three is, is this new treatment better than what we've got as the gold standard for treatment? If there's no treatment out there, um, we still do go, do go on to phase three, but there's really nothing to compare it with. And these are also these multi-center multi randomized control trials. So in phase one, it may only be in one or two centers, phase two, moving out to a couple more centers. And these phase threes can be done worldwide. It can be done in Europe. It can be done in Africa, <clears throat> anywhere in the world. And phase threes, are either done in hospitals or at this point, they can be done in doctor's offices in the outpatient setting because safety has been um, established and we know that chances are nothing will happen and can be done outpatient. There may be placebos done at this time as well. Um, or we can give this um, research drug with another drug that's already known to work. And here we're testing effectiveness. And this is the pre-marketing phase of the study. And they're very expensive to run because they're, they're given free of charge typically 
um, to multiple, multiple people. And this phase can last a few years as well. And the ap FDA application is done during this phase. And only about half of the drugs that, are, that get to phase three are successful um, and are approved by the FDA. And phase four, which really isn't talked about too much, um, is done when we need to know more about the drug. So it's FDA approved, but we need to still know more about it. And this is post-marketing um, surveillance that's done. And the FDA usually mandates if they require it or not. Drug companies are not typically gonna do this unless they want to find another um, use for their drug, they may do this. They look at quality of life, if, it's, if the drug is cost effective. So some drugs are so expensive to make that it may not be cost effective. So um, they will do a phase four to see if it is. They also do phase fours to look at long-term side effects and benefits. They may compare two FDA approved drugs during this um, phase and it's usually done in very large populations over a long period of time. And if harmful side effects are seen during this phase, the drug is pulled from the market. And the nurse's role in clinical research, most of my career has been spent in clinical research and giving new drugs, giving establishing new treatments, uh, the nurse's role is really making sure that the subject or participant understands what's going on. If they're in that phase one study, making sure they understand that this is probably not going to help you, but may help somebody else in the future with a disease that you have. Um, some familial diseases, um, participants join because their child has it or their, their future generations may have it. So they want to you know, find new drugs or, or treatments that could benefit their, their relatives in the future. Um, so the nurse administers the drug. Typically, um, a physician is not needed to administer the drug. The nurses do the administration. They, there may need to be a physician present if it's a new drug that has, so some first in human phase one studies, the drug company or the, the physician is going, the drug company may require a physician to be there because an EKG may change or there's a, a high chance of an allergic reaction. But typically the nurse is the one that's running the, the administration. We perform those study activities, drawing the blood, gathering the data, doing the EKGs. We're observing for response, any um, side effects. And we're really the gatekeeper to make sure that um, the consent is signed. So anybody that does a clinical research study has to sign a consent form. And in that consent form is going to be all of the side effects, all of the the risks of taking part in the study. Um, if a woman is of childbearing age, she may not be able to be able to participate in the study. Or if um, she is able to participate, she may have to sign in the consent form that she will use effective birth control that she doesn't become pregnant because it's a new drug. We don't know what effect that will have on the fetus or the baby in the future. Um, so the nurse is really responsible to make sure that that consent is signed and um, the subject or participant understands what's going to happen. And some nurses may be investigators or co-investigators in study and may obtain consent and determine um, eligibility here at New York Presbyterian. Um, in my unit, we don't obtain consent, but nurses that are employed by the physicians or some practices do obtain consent and um, consent and do all of that uh, coordinators stuff. And that's the end of my presentation. If anybody has any questions, I can take them now, or like I said, if something comes up, you can just email Agnes.